I'm just getting things ready here. Oh, there you are. Hey, I've, I'm trying, I'll get you, I saw you in the panel here. Let me get you in. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Hold on. Let me uh, let you in here. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get off this video audio, though, because you only can have one audio. Okay, so I'll see you inside. You're inside. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hearing you from the other one. How you been, I? I'm sure we'll have more people as we go on. So I tell me what's going on. You staying busy? Can you hear me, I? Oh, good. Am I have panelists there? Well, Forty-four percent of those tumors were low rate. Hello, Hello. Okay, welcome everybody. Hey, uh, Ahmad, how you doing, Ahmad? Are you there, Ahmad? Yes. And 17%. Yes, uh, hello, Professor John, and um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Hey, Ahmad, how you doing? You know, do you know why? Have you met Ike before? Yeah, uh, no, no, but uh, uh, yeah, this is a smart uh, doctor and neurosurgeon, and the topic is very uh, hello interesting. Yeah, can hello, you can you hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yep. uh, now I can't hear them. That's now you can't hear me. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. Much better. See, uh, and the bilateral pelvic tumor. I think uh, this is um, a young phenotype where until now has not given a very good um, review on what we can do more. But there is some hope uh, with the molecular genetics. Uh, I think uh, there were studies that has um, suggested that they are actually.
in the second story. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you clearly. John. Okay. Now that we have that, Hello. Yep. How are you? Hi. Amen. How are you? I'm from Afghanistan. Yeah. Yes, I know. We stayed in Almaty together. I remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you to uh, remember me. Uh, yes, yes. And uh, congratulations. It's a nice topic and nice uh, title you selected. Uh, I love it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I, I hope you're ready to start. Yeah, I am. Is there any other uh, talk going on, John, in the background? Yeah, does anyone have a radio on? Yeah, I'll, let me get uh, that. Hold to, on. Uh, a few important points to take from the WHO. Yeah, Ma has radio on. Okay. I just muted you, Ma. I muted your uh, uh, radio. Okay, ready, I? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good morning. Uh, this is John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach. Right here, I get my ha my hands mixed up here. Uh, we have the pleasure today of having Ibe Cherian, a leading uh, educator uh, from India, and he's going to talk about uh, success, happiness, fitness, and spirituality for neurosurgeons. And I imagine I points it pretty. Uh, he can run the show. He can make it interactive. Wait to the end. Whatever you want to do, Ibe. Okay, it's all yours. Thank you, John. Uh, I wanted to talk about something which is, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. I wanted to talk about something which a lot of neurosurgeons don't address frequently. And uh, uh, this is something that will change your life as well as uh, can take you the right way or the wrong way. So uh, most people who had a career in neurosurgery gets into a race, uh, gets into a situation where you are alone, you are battling alone most of the time, or with a small team. And uh, by the time you finish this race, you're retired. Some of them don't even finish the race when they're retired, but most of the time when you finish the race, you have a feeling that you could have done much better. You could have been kinder. You could have been nicer. You could have uh, spent more time with your family. There is other definitions to success, except, I mean, success is not just operating 2,000 cases. Maybe success is being nice to a patient as well. Maybe success is about anybody's happiness. So this is what I wanted to address today as to what is success? What is happiness? What is fitness? Many of us uh, in neurosurgery, we don't think much about fitness, but uh, you know, fitness is as important as success. And again, when we are in neurosurgery, we don't have much time for religions. I completely understand that, but spirituality is part of every neurosurgeon's job. You know, primarily because this is not a science where your results are linearly associated to what you do. You may do an excellent surgery and then two days later, your patient may be lying down, ready to, ready to be, you know, conking off, ready to die. You may do a not so good surgery or sometimes you think even a disaster and next day the patient will be sitting up. So, the thing is, it's not a linear science. And uh, as you start doing complex cases and as you start doing things which are not in your control, you sometimes, you fold your hands and then you say, God help me. I, this is overwhelming. This is not something that I can do alone. I need help. This is not religion. This is a part of, spirituality and this spirituality has got nothing to do with any any religion so i will as you start looking into this spirituality you will understand it is truly amazing 
So this is what I wanted to share to you today. So let's get ready. This is uh, this photo. If you see, can you? Doctor Sharon. Ah. Can you see my picture? Can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Right. So you can see this photograph. This is uh, taken from Valmiki. Valmiki is a place where uh, we have gone and uh, settled down in Western Maharashtra. It's on the Sahyadri mountain uh, ranges, 1,000 meters above and just next to the wildlife reserve. I find immense happiness when I go there. And although I'm not a good photographer, this place is so good that you end up taking some good photographs. Now, what is success? You know, for us, sometimes success is doing the best job that you can. I mean, neurosurgery, if people are doing a particular job and I can do it much better, I would term it, I would term that I am successful. Some people may put it on results, some, be, some people may put it on technique. Um, for me, I would rather put it on technique because results are not in my hand and if I have the best technique, results will follow. And for this, for me, skill development is important. So we have, um, rightly, we have got the S-Labs uh, lab here. We were inaugurating in August, I mean, inaugurating in Jan, uh, the next year, Jan, last week of Jan, we are inaugurating the first uh, s -Lab, lab, probably in Southeast Asia, dedicated to neurosurgery. Um, skill maintenance, you know, if you see, I will have, on my table, I will have uh, the scissors, micro scissors, instruments. So the, in my office, uh, usually there is a microscope. So whenever I get, I get time, I anastomose. I try and uh, draw, I, I learn drawing. So skill development, skill maintenance is very important as, uh, as much as operating and um, I have in my career, I have never given importance to money. Uh, money is just a substrate. I mean, even if I'm not a neurosurgeon. And by the way, uh, you can never be a billionaire with neurosurgery. So uh, I wouldn't want to be competing with the other billionaires using neurosurgery as a substrate because I'll never reach there. I'd rather start a company. I'd stop neurosurgery if money was this. Money was my main goal, then I would stop university and I would probably start a company. And these days, it looks like the best way to achieve uh, if money was my target. I'll tell you a small story. As uh, you know, you probably know the king and the farmer story. The king, he went around a bit disguised in his kingdom. And uh, he found a farmer blowing a very small piece of land. And he was uh, amazed and amused. And he asked the farmer as to why he is uh, blowing that small piece of land. So the farmer told him, see, this is what I have. So the king said, let's get you to have more. So you, tomorrow morning, you come to my place and start running. Make a circle and whatever is in the circle is yours. So the next day the farmer went there and he started running and he ran for till about 12 o'clock mid noon. He ran and then he saw that he's got a sizable amount of property. He just had to run back. And then when he's running back, he saw a few rich men. So he thought he'll run a little bit more. Then he saw the minister and he thought he'll run a little bit more. And by the time it was four o'clock, he realized it was going to be tough for him to complete the circle. And then he ran faster. But alas, in the end, he was lying down panting. 
He did not have his circle and he was plowing his small land to please the king. If you look at people, if you look at a lot of neurosurgeons, this is exactly what we do. We don't know why we are running. We just keep running. Somebody whose race is completely different, he, you see him and then you see you want to run a little bit more. And you keep running a bit more and a more and more and more. And then finally, you end up not completing your circle of life. And what is the circle? The circle is your family, your friends, people you love, the things you love to do. And in the end, once you retire or once you're forced to retire from your surgery, you end up having nothing, no family, no things that you love. And, uh, you know, suddenly you realize your surgery is all you had. It's good. It's obviously good to be passionate about neurosurgery. But the circle of life is different. And it's important for each and every neurosurgeon to understand this circle. It's not just money. It's not just the number of aneurysms you've done. It's not about what you can do and what your neighbor can do. It's about being naive. It's about being kind. And many of them, neurosurgeons, uh, us think teaching is not good. Why? Because uh, we've learned it the hard way. We've learned it 10 years, 20 years. And then why should I hand over that 20 year information to somebody who's a newbie? And that guy comes on to a level in two years, he comes on to your level. Why? Why should I do that? That's what most of us think, not right. So unless you teach, unless you teach, you never learn. You'd always be in the same place. And when you teach, when you give your information away, it's your legacy. It's, it's what you can teach people. It's, 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 that is the purpose of being a neurosurgeon. Other than operating, teaching is a purpose of being a neurosurgeon. And unless you realize this purpose, not in halfway or something, not in edited videos or somebody asks you, can you tell me how you do it? You tell them everything but one key step so that, you know, they never get to do it. Always with the intention of helping others, always with the intention that my 20 years should be one moment for the other guy. So that's why, you know, being like a child, stupid and naive and kind gives you happiness. You should try this. I mean, you may think, it takes away your importance. On the contrary, it, it, it actually gets you to respect yourself. Another thing is family time. Well, you must know that if anybody thinks family time is not part of success, they are completely wrong. Um, family time doesn't have to be especially with your wife and kids. It can be with your friends can be with your girlfriends. My wife is next room, so I mean, uh, I hope she doesn't hear that, but can be with your girlfriends, can be with your dog, can be with the people you do adventure sports with, can be with anybody. Family time is away from neurosurgery with a set of people who, who like the things that you like. So let me show you this is a recording from just two, three days back. Success is also be able to, being able to innovate. Now, what is innovation? So, see, right now, microscopes are the main thing. This is an exoscope. So, and this is a robot that we designed to hold the endoscope. This is the Esculap Neuropilot, and that is the endoscope. So we have the exoscope, we have the endoscope. We are taking a corpus callosal epidermoid, which is encased, uh, both the pericallosals and both the callosal marginals. So um, this is how we're doing it. We are using a very minimally invasive uh, um, approach to this to take out the last bits. And we are using the endoscope to see, this is the endoscopic view on this side, and this is the exoscope view so that 
I exoscope view is in 3D and the endoscope view is in 2D. We also have the 3D exoscopes, uh, but what we do is when we build a theater, when we make a theater, I try to be as innovative as possible. So we try to make instruments that are innovative. We collaborate with many companies like Esculap, with uh, uh, Indian companies, uh, other Indian companies to make instruments which are innovative. Uh, keep on making things. They, they doesn't have to be successful. They doesn't need to see the light of the day, but just, just for the heck of it, just to innovate and make something that is new. Just for the spirit of it, you can make it. You may test it and then you may find that it's not useful. Uh, but sometimes you may test it and find that it's, it's fantastic. So for example, the exoscope, we have a Kinevo, full-fledged Kinevo. But now I have so much, uh, I so much like the exoscope, especially with the endoscope. I so much like the exoscope, I hardly use the Kinevo at all. What is happiness? I would define happiness as constant growth. In between lines, you must also understand that constant growth also means constant failures. Constant growth also means constant heartbreaks. Constant growth also means getting out of your comfort zones. And constant growth also means getting rid of your bad karma each day. I'll clarify it for you. Let's see. Imagine you did a pitoclival or you did a, 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 a difficult aneurysm. And you had a difficult day. Everything was went on not as planned. And the clip was not optimal. And that's the best you could do. And uh, obviously, the patient didn't do well. You can choose two, two things. You can choose two things. One is, okay, I'm not going to do this again. I have many other things which I'm good at. And so I'm not going to do this again. And the second thing is, you get back to the video and then decide that, listen, I have not done a great job. I'm going to look through my failure and I'm going to figure out what happened and I'm going to get better. It's right out of your comfort zone because uh, it is something that you have to grow and at your stage sometimes growth is difficult. So you can expand comfort zones. So let's say if you're doing 50 push-ups one day, next day, you've got to do 60. Next day, you've got to do 100. And each time when you increase by one, it's so difficult and you know, it, it gets you to lie down. It, it gets you out of your breath. It, you think you're going to get a heart attack. But that's how growth is. Embracing your failures expanding your comfort zone. And let me tell you one more thing. One of the things that you would want to be when you are successful is kindness and patience under stress. It's very easy to be kind and patient with no stress. But when you're under stress, to be kind to your children, to be kind to other people, to be kind to your patients, relatives who are asking you different questions, difficult questions, to be kind to your assistant who's done something not so optimal. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to, uh, you have to keep on tolerating nonsense. It's not that, but as much as you can, if you can be kind under stress, that in itself is a success. And for happiness, if I can give you one single line for happiness, go against the tide, be stupid, be naive, 
and give unconditionally in relationships. Give unconditionally. Today we have husbands who think my wife is loving me this much, so I have to give her this much. But if your friends take you for a fool and take advantage of you, still give it to them. This is not because Jesus Christ or Allah or Rama told you to. It's because this is the way you will be happy. I can assure you this. Be kind. Be nice. Be naive. Be stupid. I cannot think of any cunning, smart, street smart guys who are happy. They are successful. They are not happy. So if you want to be, you can be wise, but not cunning. You can be smart, but not to the extent that you win. You win the race all the time. It's not needed all the time. So this is what you should remember for happiness. Fitness. Well, it's something that a lot of people give less importance to. Can a neurosurgeon have eight packs? Can a practicing neurosurgeon have eight packs? Or is it impossible? It's very much possible. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience, it's, it's very much possible. How do you do that? Finish a case, come back, do 100 push-ups. Finish counseling, go back to your room, do 100 push-ups. Sometimes, don't eat when you're not hungry. There are core exercises which you can do. They are uh, available on uh, YouTube. They are available on uh, every single platform. There is yoga. Yoga is a beautiful. Today morning, we have 78 uh, sets of Surya Namaskar, which is, uh, which is a formidable exercise. 78 sets, it's not easy. And be good at one physical game, not the phone game. Go play badminton, go play tennis, go play football. Maybe football, my age, I used to play football, but I have an ACL tear now, but Whenever I do see it, I mean, now the only thing I can do is uh, taking penalties. So, but whenever I can, I go and play table tennis, maybe. Uh, but there are games which are much less physically taxing and should be good at one. And you should be regularly playing it. Not just passable, but pretty good. Okay, you should be. And also be good at one intellectual game. So maybe a game of chess, so I, I love playing chess. So there, is, there are guys who like Sudoku and there are other, a lot of crosswords, a lot of things. But you can be good at one physical game and at one intellectual game. This is fitness, okay? And remember, if you would like to take away something, it would be fasting as well as uh, increasing, increasing the limits of your exercise. So don't think that as a neurosurgeon, oh, you, you, you can't get eight packs, it's impossible. It's only for models and all that. No, it's not true, okay? You can, everybody can. Whatever be your age, you can. Whatever be your fitness now, you can. But as I said, you have to go through, you have to go right through your zones of discomfort, okay? You have to do that. Few things I would like you to, I'd like to tell you. We have two lobes, two brain lobes. The funny thing about it is we always divide. We don't use the corpus callosum to unite these lobes. We divide. Division is always comes easier to us, you know, the white man, the black man. Okay? Christian, the Hindu, the Muslim. The south of Italy, north of Italy. South of India, north of India. South of the state, north of the state. 
The guys living next door, guys living this door. Good, evil, past, present. Oh, that girl, she should be judged by her past. She is not a great person. This guy, hmm, he comes from a bad community. No, not good. This guy comes from a bad country. I mean, you shouldn't trust him too much. So we classify because of the schism of our two lobes. And this schism is what promotes hate, ego, anger, a lot of things which we think is important is fueled by these things. But you know, we must yearn, we must try and use our callosum to use, which means our two lobes should be in harmony, like the yin and yang. There is darkness and there is, there is white and black in that picture. But you see how beautiful they are in harmony. And even in the white, there's a black dot. And in the black, there is a white dot. It's the beauty of yin and yang. This is true in every man. You can say no man is evil. Maybe the most, uh, the serial killer, you think there's no ounce of good in him? You denounce him for what he is and don't understand that there's a bit of good in him with his sack. So none of us are beasts. None of us are angels. We have everything. It's important to balance and bring out the best. Another thing I show is this is a river delta. A river delta. This is the Ganges entering the Bay of Bengal. And this is the virtual organ spaces in the brain on my right, right side of the screen. It is so much similar and it is based on the Fibonacci equation. Branching pattern is so close to Fibonacci equation. So are the blood vessels. So are your lungs. So are the leaves. So is the sky. So when you start thinking about this, it's truly amazing that the patterns you find in the nature, the patterns you find everywhere is similar. And yet you are thinking about one small ego or one small thing, how to let down your fellow neurosurgeon and say, your work is not great, you know. Your work is okay, but not comparable to my work. We all suffer as neurosurgeons. We all shed tears. We all have, have our heartbreaks. You know, if we are together, if we appreciate each other, if we understand that somebody in a place doesn't have enough things, doesn't have enough exposure to training, somebody has enough training but doesn't have enough patience, somebody, because of his personality trait, he is nervous. So nobody is not good enough. Nobody is, you know, trying less than what is his best. Nobody is operating. People say that, oh, he's operating to kill that patient. Not true. Money may have diluted our aims, but everybody is fighting the same war. So why not be together instead of in conferences getting up and trying to lambast others saying, what are you doing? Instead of that, why couldn't you be, why can't we be a little bit more kinder? The chakras, um, so the lowest chakra is Muladhara. It is uh, when prana fills the body, the first chakra to fill. Muladhara is lust and creativity. Then comes Swadhishtana. It is a chakra of satisfaction. Manipurna, chakra of energization. That means that unless your lust is satisfied. So people think, Oh, lust is bad. Many religions say lust is bad. It's sin. The greatest sin is guilt and fear. If you have lust to or greediness or anything, I don't think it is a sin. It is muladhara. It's because of your muladhara. It's a basic instinct of yours. It is not sin. A basic instinct. You cannot be born if God was all good. He could have taken off your muladhara. Maybe 
you would you would have born without any muladhara, but it's it's not true. So don't listen to anybody who says this is a sin. Okay, they have their vested interests, so you don't listen to them. But of course, you must listen to your wife. Uh, otherwise, she can break your muladhara off. So, uh, so muladhara is lust and creativity. Swadishtana is satisfaction. Maniputa, Manipurna is energization. Anahata is pure emotions. You see, this is how you claim eternally. Both joy and sadness brings tears. And it is very important to cry once in a while. In fact, not once in a while, almost every day. If you want to get your karmic load, your, your load of bad karma away, no better, no better way than crying. Crying your heart out. Can be with laughter, can be with sadness. So some people see movies and you know you have tears coming down, and you think, ah, oh, softy. Not true. They may be the toughest guys on earth. Okay, but to to be crying, to use your anahata chakra is very important. Next is vishuddha, which is kindness. What is kindness? Kindness is not charity. When I have two shirts and giving away, one is charity. When I have only one shirt and give, I give that away. Basically, I be stupid. That is kindness. Okay. It is not easy to practice, but you start practicing it, you will realize that there's no better thing than that. There's no better thing for happiness than we should have. And once you have mastered your lust, your satisfaction, your energy, your emotions. And once you have learned how to be kind, you know, learning to be kind is not learning to be meek. Some people are meek, which means they don't have the voice to talk out to the strong. After meekness, you attain strength. That means you can talk out to the strong. You can, you are strong. And then the next cycle is kindness, where you, you have the strength, but you still decide that I must be stupid. I would be naive. I would be kind that I give this in. Okay. This is Vishuddha Chakra. The next is Ajna. Ajna is the third eye. It is uh, very important because the, the left sided Ida that is the female force feminine. The right side of Pingala, that is the ma masculine. And the Sushumna, which is the, the main Nadi or the main uh, nervous system. It unites together at the, at the Ajna. In fact, it is the Shiva's third eye. It, it really just means that at that point of prana, at that level of existence, you shed all your prakritas, which means your natures. You are neither good nor evil. Nor do you differentiate good or evil. You cannot say, this is a bad man, this is a good man. You don't differentiate past, present, future. Because of what happened in the past, you don't differentiate. The past, past or you think what is going to happen in the future, you don't differentiate. You lose all your prakritas, which means no black, no white, no evil, no good, no past, no present, no future. So that is when all your prakritas are destroyed. It's not you who are destroyed, but your prakritas are destroyed. Your nature is destroyed. Okay. So there is no more, I am thin, I am fat, I am black, I am white, I am evil, I am good. No, no more. My past is this, my present is this, my future is this. No, nothing. There you exist at that level, at that present. That is Atma. Okay. And after you lose your prakritas, the next step is Sahasrasara, where you understand the whole universe is you. The mantra to that, Tattvamasi, which means you are the universe. There is nothing less. You are nothing less, nothing more. There's no God. There's no you. It's just you and everybody around you. The planets around you, the grass around you, the animals around you, the inanimate, animate stars, everything, you are there. 
So at Atna, when you lose your prakritas, what you've done is you've taken, imagine you are a piece of salt and you put that salt into the sea. What happens? The salt dissolves. There's no more salt. And you think the salt is gone. You are dead. But what happens? The next stage of understanding, you understand that the salt is the ocean. The salt has become the ocean. Okay? You are everywhere. That Those atoms of that salt crystal, it's gone all over the ocean. Okay? It dissolves and it goes all over the ocean. The salt is the ocean. So this is the chakras. This is the understanding of chakras. You see the brain cell and you see the universe. It's amazingly similar. You see the atoms. It's amazingly similar. The microcosm and the microcosm. This is the neural network and this is the cosmic <coughs> network. <coughs> this is a pattern that one of the puffer fishes in the Pacific Ocean, there's a puff of fish. It makes this pattern. 24 spokes, and this is the Ashoka Chakra, which is actually a yantra. It's on the Indian flag. It's a yantra. Yantras are visual manifestations of mantras. These are patterns, holy patterns, like for example, the David star, the six-pointed star, which is there in Aramaic culture. It is there in Hindu culture. It's called the Sri Yantra. It is thought to be the semantics or the visual pattern of the sound called home. And, you know, how did the fish draw this? I mean, the fish is not so intelligent enough to make a complex structure like that. It was hearing something. It saw that sound and it made it. Okay. So, these are things you must see the pattern of this color. This is the Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set is an equation for infinity. And in Hinduism, one of the things that we like about Ganesh is how he will provide his infinity. And you see, the similarities of the Mandelbrot set to Ganesh, Fibonacci's number in nature, in storms, in flowers, in universes, I'd like to stop my talk here. Thank you very much. So I hope you guys have now some idea about what we are talking about. I intend to write a book on this. I hope in one year I can bring the book out. Thank you very much. Okay, I, I thank you very much. Uh, and it's kind of whatever you want to do. Uh, does anybody uh, have something to say they want to Check in with Ike. Welcome to Kasha. There's Vlad. How you been, Vlad? I'm doing fine. Hi, excellent. I, I love this when we are getting beyond the scope of neurosurgery. Yeah. And you are always out of the box. Actually, since I've known you, you've never been inside the box. <laughs> so. Inside the box. Uncomfortable. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, doctor. Yeah. Hi, the king is here. <laughs> no, no, I, uh, Dr. Ipe, that was a wonderful, you know, you, as Vlad has said, you are different. And everything you do is different. And uh, my best wishes to you. Thank you think you differently. Much. You perform differently. And you love the things which many people ignore. Many people do not wonder about the nature, the God, the fishes, and how the various things you talked about are a little bit unusual for a neurosurgeon to think about these things. Basically, we are involved so much in our work, so much in our subject, we stop thinking about the nature. You see, we are very small fragment in the entire universe. We should look at the universe, we should look at the stars, we should look at the moon with awe. You know, how much little we know about the nature, about the divinity of the nature. And in our neurosurgery also, how nature intervenes to protect the human being. 
You see, whenever there is a disease, we think that we humans can treat the disease and we have the power, we can run over it. But there is something called divine intervention. How nature protects the human being. You see, when you get a, you, when you buy a car, the servicing is for six months or one year, that is a free servicing of your car. But when you get a human body, nature protects it throughout. There is a free servicing throughout the life. So these concepts which you have discussed and mentioned have to be used in the perspective of neurosurgery. And you relate those concepts to neurosurgery. In You see how in every... When I see neurosurgery, when I see tumors, when I see degeneration of uh, degenerative spinal issues, when I see hydrospelas, when I see syringomyelia, when I see inflammation, when I see edema, I think about nature's intervention in the disease process and reparative ways of the nature. So nature is too big and nature is huge. And we as humans should respect and love nature and learn from nature. I think this message you have been able to convey very beautifully, my dear Ipe. And I wish that you write this book that you are talking about. And the most happy person to see that book is John Bennett, who is sitting, smiling. He will be the happiest person. John, what do you have to say about what? There you, there you uh, go. Ipe? There you go. This is definitely a different uh, webcast. And uh, I'd like the audience to. Uh, Participate. Takashi from Japan, how are you doing? Yeah. Uh, 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 good evening. I'm Dr. Takashi Kong from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, thank you for a uh, for, uh, great lecture. Uh, not uh, limited to neurosurgery, uh, but I think that the happiness and uh, philosophy and is a very important happiness and very important for our neurosurgeons. We are working uh, harder and sometimes lost uh, the chance of uh, enjoying your life with your family. But so uh, it, it uh, uh, the neurosurgeon's uh, philosophy and uh, uh, neurosurgeon's feelings is very important to the patients. So uh, we are very impressed in this lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have some other people in the panel. Uh, let's see. Can uh, I add something, uh, John? Yeah, go ahead. I, go ahead. Uh, I. It was great since uh, the Earth has been here for something like fourteen billion years. We as civilization are here like a 6,000 years. It's a blip. The nature hasn't yet realized we are here. <laughs> Once it does, it will get rid of us very fast and <laughs> without any hesitation. And the next thing is, you were talking uh, happiness, but there is another English term which has a little broader uh, meaning. It's a bliss. And the humans probably seek bliss. They seek divinity, as Atul has said. They seek bliss, and they seek eternity. What yes, do you think true. about? Yeah. So, in fact, uh, we we talk about in yoga. We talk about five levels of the body. One is uh, Annamaya Kosha, what is made of food. Then Pranamaya Kosha, the electricity around you. And then you have Vijnana Maya Kosha, that your knowledge, knowledge is not your knowledge, it's all around you, in fact. The phone, with the phone we can download it, but unfortunately with your brain you have, you have lost, the, lost the ability to download knowledge. But there is knowledge all, all around you. That is Vijnana Maya Kosha. Then you have Mano Maya Kosha, your mind. Your mind is so powerful that it can go beyond the gate of death and come back. You can think, you can sit somewhere, but your mind can go beyond. It can imagine your death and then come back. So that is Mano Maya Kosha. And that last part is the bliss. That is called Ananda Maya Kosha. Ananda is the term for bliss. The problem is, to reach this, you have to go exactly in reverse of how you are going. What we are doing is we try to accumulate things. We try to divide, we try to accumulate and we divide again, we accumulate more. And this is exactly the opposite way that you have to go. You have to give away and you have to break down boundaries. 
so you break down boundaries and then you take the divisions of you be kind you be naive you be stupid and that is the direction towards bliss <laughs> being smart cunning accumulation dividing is just going away from bliss so the moment we realize it we'll come back but then the problem is we realize it a bit too late so we think that we have all the time on earth and by the time we realize that we are going the wrong way then either some people even they they understand and then they come back or during the moment of death you know during the time that we are about to die we realize that we were just going the opposite way we should not accumulate we should not divide we should be stupid we should be like a child and the more you are like i mean what i have seen you with with you is blad you are so spontaneous you are you are sometimes so funny and you make others laugh so much and you think in that way so what i have seen is even dr professor goyal um you know you you think like a child and that is why you are able to innovate i mean if you are not like a child it's impossible to innovate you are you get into that rut and it's impossible to even appreciate anybody or you 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 go away so much from bliss that you are seething with frustration seething with anger and seething with uh, i mean there is no peace in your mind and you go away and it's uh, you forget to smile you forget to look at the moon you forget to hug somebody you forget to appreciate a child's laughter you know you you forget everything and then even by being a neurosurgeon you you think you are top sharp but you know you end up being the most saddest person in that in that uh, on the planet you know this is something so when you talk about bliss the ways to reach bliss is to just go opposite to what we are doing thank you abdallah it looks like you want to say something abdallah kwamu kwamu go ahead Can you unmute yourself, uh, Abdallah? Well, perhaps not. Well, Yong Hong, uh, is an old friend. How are you doing, Yong Hong, in China? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Second yeah, job. Hi. Yeah. Yes. Very interesting lecture. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. Very good. A uh, cystinostomy uh, in China. A lot of cystinostomy in China. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, very good. Yeah, uh, uh, in China, uh, actually, cystostomy is uh, became wider and wider. Why? And, uh, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, we do uh, many works. So uh, I look forward to see and uh, to India to have a lecture about uh, our work. You are most welcome. And you must well. yes good, yes uh -huh. uh, good to see yeah. you uh, uh, this ahead. lecture yeah uh, this lecture i have uh, this uh, evening have this lecture is very very interesting like a fitness spirit at uh, uh, some uh, five levels of our body that's uh, the body health is a very important uh, Uh, for our neurosurgery doctors, yes. uh, because because uh, our uh, operation time is uh, longer than other surgery, so it's like a, a body health, spirit health. Uh, the, that is very important. So, <clears throat> thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, Ken Keller in Malawi, Africa. Do you want to say something to I? <clears throat> can you hear me, Ken? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, um, I can hear you. Uh, thank you very much, Prof, uh, for the very uh, nice presentation. Um, I'm an early career surgeon. I only graduated in uh, 2018. So I remember as a resident, I think I met you in Mombasa at the Dablia Fitness Conference. Uh, yeah. You were with Vlad as well. Yes. And I think some other face. 
And uh, that time, all I was looking forward to is uh, becoming a neurosurgeon. And I had this grand idea about what it would be. But uh, having gone through a few years and, uh, you know, having seen what it's like, a lot of work, a lot of uh, pressure and uh, sometimes not having enough time or being able to balance life with the family, rest, exercise. Um, I think it's just important uh, what, you, what you said. And um, I think it's very helpful for me moving forward uh, to learn from you because you've done this for many years and now you can shed light on you know what's really important and how to do it. So I'm very glad uh, that uh, you made uh, this presentation. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ken. I see. I, I didn't know. I didn't know where Malawi was. <laughs> it's in the center, real central part of Africa. When when we were children, we used to collect Malawi stamps. They were very interesting stamps. Oh, really? So, yeah, that was uh, almost uh, maybe 30, 40 years back. So okay, when we were children, mm. we used to collect these Malawi stamps, and we used to exchange. Uh, you know, Malawi stamps had high value, so we could get three or four country stamps with those Malawi stamps. Okay, good, good, nice. Good. Ken, could you put your name in the chat, your email, so I can get in touch with you later? Bhaktiar Gurhani wants to ask it. Okay, I would do that. I would do that. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Yeah, hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Very inspiring. Um, so I enjoyed uh, um, your lecture. Um, as you mentioned, the, um, the nature is very uh, strong and very, very small. So I teach also my residents to respect the nature. And we are saying, okay, I heal this patient, but this is the nature um, who is healing the patient. We are just uh, teaching. This has been said, just the same question we anchor, encounter every time, where's the soul? Do you have any idea uh, how to uh, solve this problem? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see, one thing you must understand is the most of the mysteries of the nature is not easy for you to decipher, as Dr. Goel was telling. It's not easy for us to decipher. What we can do is to try and heal Maybe we are reversing something which the nature planned. Maybe it's not good at all. But the good thing is we are trying based on our perspective, based on our view. We are trying our best. Now, the thing that we need to avoid is we need to stop acting as we are the ones trying the best. There are other people who are as important as us trying to do the same thing. So this is what we must know, acknowledge, not only just to be nice to people, but in our heart, we should acknowledge that, you know, everybody, every neurosurgeon, every nurse, every grade four worker, everybody is so important and they're trying their level best without which the comforts that you have may not have been possible. So it's important not to be nice, just to be kind. It's, it's not to show the society to put on a mask of kindness, but it's truly important to be kind and naive to, from your heart. And then, you know, it will change. Things will change because once in nature, the universe works with you, things are different. I always say that, you must have the universe working with you. When you're doing a case, people say that, oh, this is very easy. It's, it, it's very easy when you do it. And when I do it, it's not easy. I mean, it's very, I'm struggling. I'm sure the ACE neurosurgeons in this uh, group can relate to this. When uh, Dr. Goyal of Vlad does something, it it's, looks very easy. But you know what? The universe works with you. It's very important that the universe starts working. The nature starts working with you. And how can you have the nature to start working with you? It's by being a better person, by being kind, by being nice, 
Maybe you are not so nice externally, but in your heart, if you are nice, the universe works with you. It will, you know, if you shed tears easily, if you can get rid of your karmic uh, uh, burden easily, and you can be like a child, the universe works with you. That is very important. Believe me, you working alone, you cannot do much. But when the universe works with you, it's on a different level. You can think of things which nobody has ever thought of. You can do things which nobody can ever do. And, you know, you can term it as God or some name to it, but it is a universe working. Okay, the floor is open. Shivani, I see. Uh, yeah, I see Shivani also here. Yeah. Shivani is an architect by profession. Oh, yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Oh, uh, so uh, thank you so much, sir, for your lecture. Uh, I am unfortunate, un unfortunately missed the initial part of the lecture. Uh, but I also wanted like to know your perspective, uh, if you can share a little bit about uh, beauty, not as we know of it conventionally, or not just in the visual sense, but uh, beauty in the sense of happiness and uh, like the Indian Hindu philosophy. Yeah, so even in the West, they say beauty is skin deep. So, but, you know, in every single thing, there is beauty. Mm -hmm. You go to the, you go to the most dirty parts of the world, you take a drop of water from the most dirty part mm -hmm. of, and then you look under the microscope. Mm. the more you look let us say you start seeing the molecules you yeah. start seeing the atoms and you will understand that you know the most dirtiest is so beautiful mm -hmm. and the most ugliest you think there is no beauty right. you start to sometimes know them it is not knowing about them it is knowing them Mm -hmm. You know, it's, there is a huge difference between knowing about somebody and knowing somebody. So right. you start knowing them, then you understand that sometimes you understand how much beautiful they are. Mm. And, you know, although uh, when, you, when we are young, we go for the external beauty. But once you, once you mature out and once you are in deep into a relationship, you start understanding the beauty of the soul and you start beholding that person as the most beautiful. Right. Sometimes some people live in houses. I've seen quite rich people living in really stale houses. You get into that house and you don't want to sit there. You, But for that person, that room is the most comfortable, the most amazing place ever because it is his home. You know, it's not that they don't have the money to change it or they don't have the... So, Beauty is a very, very relative term. It's an extremely relative term. And in fact, if you look for it, you can find beauty in everything. Everything. Right. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Any, anyone else from the panel would like to come in? <clears throat> I think we have finished the one hour time and uh, I think we must wind it up. So thank you very much for all the, uh, all the comments and everything. You know, I keep learning. I'm writing this book. As you said, I'm writing it on uh, maybe instead of happiness, I can put bliss as uh, Vlad said. Uh, Cambridge scholars are publishing it. So I, they have just given the book proposal. It's going to be an 80 to 100 page book. And I want chapters from all of you, anybody of you who thinks, I mean, I definitely want it from Vlad and Professor Goyal for sure. And I would like to understand what, what is happiness? What is success? Uh, you know, what do you do to, to succeed? What do you do for happiness? What do you do for fitness? What is your sense of spirituality? I mean, everybody, you know, one thing you must understand is everybody you meet, everyone you meet, 
they have a different bag. They don't carry the same bag as yours, and that is why you judge. You judge people because they carry a different bag. But in that different bag, their life is different. Their perspective is different. They're, they're looking at things that are different. They're, their ideas are different because their bag is different. Their glasses are different. So I would like to know, I mean, I would like to have chapters from each one of you. And I'd like you to tell me. And then, you know, in meetings, in, in the next meetings or webinars or physical meetings, I think we should look to be more giving more importance to being kind, being nice, you know, being friends, enjoying together instead of trying to compete, instead of trying to show that I am better, you're not good. Instead of that, we must be trying in, in our neurosurgical conferences, at least we must be sharing our burden. We have, all of us have huge burdens. We are neurosurgeons, we, we live with a weight. We live with a huge burden. We should be able to help each other and pat somebody on the back and say, hey, listen, I had this, I had that, and you know, this is how to get out of it. This is how you must help. And this would be a change, welcome change for the youngsters coming into neurosurgery instead of putting them into the pressure cooker situation that we've gone through and you know that we are going through. And it is important for us to change the practice to something that is more kinder that is uh, more you know, humane, that is more happier, and that is more perfect. Okay, that is important. Very good. I, okay, I'd just like to tell everyone here that I was talking about uh, how to use a smartphone well next uh, Sunday with uh, Ben Zhu. So we'll get a good audience uh, from them. I don't know if we've... I was so easy to get a hold of, and he's done webcasts from a smartphone. Uh, and of course, neurosurgeons always have a smartphone, and why not get good at it? Uh, so uh, we hope to see you there. Thank you very much, Ipe, and thanks for the participation from everybody. See you guys. Thank you so much. See you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Thank you.